Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, Rob. Rob. Hey, Rob. All right, so everybody's here. Um, let's see. Yes, I think so. We've got our guest speakers all set. Hello, everyone. Welcome. All right, so I guess call the meeting to order. Um, do we have any um, past, uh, do we have minutes to um, approve? Um, yes, you. they should be in that email I sent you. Yep, okay, has everybody read, read, read that over? Yeah. Okay, yes. so we got a motion for acceptance. Move to approve the minutes. Approve the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, public comment, I guess, is kind of the first thing on, on the agenda. Uh, Eva Maria Talzig, the uh, the poplars. Rob or Dale, anything on that? Dale, uh, I did. So I did talk to Dale and uh, he's got personal knowledge out there, but I wanted to see if he's got records. Um, we have not had a chance to meet um, specific to this, other than talking on the phone about it. Uh, Dale, can you speak a little bit about uh, your experience uh, out here at uh, this particular site? Where is the 17 on, uh, 117 Orange? No, no, 39 Liberty, Dale. 30, um, very large. Oh, there's Eva. Okay. Are the, the poplars on, on Liberty? Yes. Yeah. So the, these are. You know what, actually, these are the two poplars that uh, I think the, the person who planted them came in and got approval uh, to take them down, correct? No, these are the large poplars that were approved for takedown, but they will need a crane service. Crane. Yeah, yeah. So that's the status right now. We, we need to get this. We need to put a contract in place for a crane service to be able to do this. This is um, it's a big, big job. The trees right. are, uh, so that, that's, that's where we're at. I think somebody should probably at least reach out to Sam Myers. He got the machine to do it. That's exactly. You got something that big, deal? John, you're breaking up again like the last time. I'm going to have to. Yeah, so we did reach out initially to, uh, we reached out to uh, a number of- He does, yeah. I saw it working on Main Street. I. John's not uh, very stable right now. I would reach out to Sam. Well, the service has to go out to bid. This is not something we can simply contract uh, for without uh, putting it out for competitive uh, bid, but uh, we'll work through that. So um, is, uh, just so, I'm, so I understand it, uh, Sam has, he, he has one of those lift things, right? That he goes up in that's essentially like a, no, 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 no. it's not a crane. And you got you got a crane with a frosty cutter on it. I got you. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. That reaches about eighty feet. It's about as high as those trees are, too. Yeah, the trees about seventy-five. Yep. Yep. You know, and I only got a sixty-three foot bucket. Sixty-three, sixty-five. May I say that my biggest concern is that as they continue to grow, they become more and more dangerous. 
because those roots are everywhere. And the last thing we need <clears throat> is to have them tear up the sewer system or the water lines, which go down India. And so I'm, my family continues to badger me because they know that I'm the one that's here. Sure. We're, we're well uh, aware of the, the, of the, the town has a project that's uh, coming past that area is um, the sewer force main project. And uh, we did a site walk past there the other day. I did mention that uh, to the team looking at it, that those trees are slated to come down. I don't believe they were considered to be hazard necessarily, right? I think, I think they, well, they could be a, the point I, I was understand. that they were determined uh, were determined to be coming down at the request of the people who planted them. Uh, the committee granted that, and the town is working uh, to get that to make that happen. And I will say the, it's going to take some time. Yeah. So. And if I had the capability to do it, they would have already been done to date. So that's the best we can do, Eva, for now. But put, I think we'll get this on the agenda pretty quickly, though, from here on in. All right. Uh, Number two, Michael Vesey, 12 North Water Street. I'm not aware of this one. Is that the, is that the elm that, 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 uh, that uh, broke up in, in a storm, Dale? North Water. North Water, 12 North Water Street. That tree has been removed and the stump has been ground. Okay. That was one of the valley forges that I planted years ago. Right, right, yep. That grew itself. So 12 North Water was removed in 19 by Scotty and Will. And we just did the stump the other day. Yep, I saw the stump grinder. So down. is he looking to have a replant? I think that's the big issue right now. Yep. Yeah. So Michael's request via email was, um, I quote, I don't know if the town intends to replace this tree, but we would like to request that the tree not be replaced. I guess as it gives us more sunlight in the front of the house and a wider sidewalk. That's correct. And Dale, uh, we've met before. This is Michael Vesey. And thank you for uh, letting me attend the meeting. You replaced one elm at 14 North Water Street, which is just oh, probably about 20 yards from the most recent one where the stump was just removed last week. And you know, what we'd like to do is just not replant that tree and just, um, you know, maintain the sidewalk as it is. Well, that was an existing tree there. And that's why we always yeah. try. I mean, no, I don't think we're, I don't think our, our policy is to replace trees that, that come down if, if you know, in, in that case, they were planted for a particular purpose to enhance the, uh, the vista of looking down uh, North Water Street. I think it's uh, it's kind of like a, to me, it's not really a private issue. It's it's really a, a uh, in the interest of, of the general public to uh, to have the tree back there where it is, from my view. But that was the big elm that I took down. That was the original elm that split apart doing Hurricane Bob when I took that tree down. And that's why I planted that. Uh, yep. So there's always been a tree in that location. Yes. And then when I planted the Zelcobra with oh. a sycamore maple that I took down. Yep. Okay. There was trees in that spot. That's the, then the only other trees we have on that sidewalk is the elm in front of the bed and breakfast. Yep. And the ginkgo uh, down by the theater place. There. Right. Yep. 
And, and what would the tree, uh, what would be replanted, similar to what you did, uh, Dale, at you know at 14 Northwater? Um, that would probably have to go to the tree committee meeting to figure out what, what would best. I would like to put another Zell Cobra in that spot. Yep. Which is, doesn't get as big as an elm tree. Now, in the meantime, is the sidewalk going to be repaired? Because it's a very narrow sidewalk right in front of um, the stairs uh, leading to the front door at 12. And that's one of the things that, you know, we wanted the co committee to consider is the narrowness of that sidewalk. Even, even with that tree in its mature state wouldn't, wouldn't affect that sidewalk that much. Okay. The, the, the new planted, if we plant a Zell Cobra. Okay. To answer your question though, uh, Mr. Vesey, uh, the um, stump grinding project uh, just recently completed, I think 32 or 34 um, around the island. And we will be going back and uh, completing the sidewalk repairs in those areas uh, prior to uh, replanting new trees. Okay, and do you have any particular timetable for replanting the tree? I do not. Dale, uh, yeah. any answer to that? No. Uh, okay. I, mean, I would rather not do it in planting pass May 1st. Okay. Or May 1st. So if they call me, I just click on this, I unmute myself. Yeah, do they know that you're there? Don't you? No. Oh. Well, that my picture. Carson. Carson, we Hi. can hear you. We can you're see unmuted. you. Yep. And and you're not muted. There you go. <clears throat> okay. Sorry. So um, the sidewalk will be repaired temporarily, and then uh, there will be a planting scheduled um, to go back in that same place, likely a Zelkova. All right. Well, thank you very much for letting me attend the meeting. Thank you for your input. Okay, thanks. All right. Uh, um, before we move on, just really quickly, I need to identify who is being listed as administrator, please. I need your first and last name. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know why I'm in there as an administrator, but um, uh, my name is Ed Perlman, P-E-R-L-M-A-N. Wonderful. And um, okay. Do you want to know why, why I'm listening in? That's okay. Well, um, are you on the agenda for today's meeting? Um, no, but I was, I was told to just to come in. There, there is an issue with a, a property that we bought and just closed on yesterday. And okay. I think you're, everyone is familiar with it. And I just wanted to ask about it. I'm not sure when during the agenda, when I'm allowed to speak. Okay. Or, to the public when we finish our scheduled public comments we'll come to you um, okay. but welcome thank you and then secondly uh whoever is listed as emft can i please have your first and last name eva maria all right yes that's <clears throat> eva maria yep. my last name is tausig t is in thomas a u s i g is in george Thank you and I thank you so much for allowing me to attend also. Thank of you. Course. Of course. All right. Thank you. We can continue. All right, shall we move on to three? Isaiah Truman appealing 117 Orange Street, the removal of a honey locust. Uh, there you are. How's everybody doing today? Good, how are you? Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks so, for having me. Sure. Uh, tree at 117 Orange Street, uh, it, uh, according to, to Dale Gary, uh, was planted during the, the, the tenure of uh, Bud Clue. Uh, he was uh, uh, the uh, 
superintendent of public works back. How many years ago was that deal that you figured that tree was planted? Oof, we... Was that during the, uh, was that the, the, the tree commission? That was during the tree commission before when they was at the island home. Yep. When island home there. So that was 40, over 40 years ago. Yep, yep. Matter of fact, I can I can get the date they was all planted from Mrs. Fisher because all the locusts was planted along that yep. same time. And I think and, and I think and I think all those trees had a had an easement uh, sign. Well, not an easement so much as I guess for a better word uh, by the homeowners along there to plant the trees. Mrs. In their Fisher, still, Mrs. Fisher today still have have her easement. Paperwork. Yep. And the um, Bambers did have their easement paperwork. And the Foxes uh, yep. still maintain their easement paperwork, I think. Right. So all, all the honey locusts was planted around. Abbott Oderson's brother was around 10 years old when, when they planted like the Allen home. Yep. And that was, that was John McLaughlin's house. Okay. So. I mean, Dale, what's your history of maintaining that honey locust? I've, I've thrown that to a Roger Geiger, who was the arborist before me, a couple of times, and I've been in it a couple of times myself. If I can find my books, I can come up with some dates, and I have no idea what happened to my, my log books. And it was before we started going to uh, records we keep it today. Everything was written down in books. Yep. And I just gave them a monthly report. And I have a work order from 2017 from Carlisle Jensen um, <coughs> for pruning. Um, and that was completed in 2013 or 17, excuse me. Yes, I did that job. I, I pruned that tree. Scotty. And I can email that over to you right now if, you, if you'd like. But the fact is, the, the 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 town did plant that plant that tree at the at yes yes with yes. permission of 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 the original homeowner maybe not yes. the original homeowner but the homeowner at the time. So that's where that stands now, uh, and you know, I think we've we talked about this at the last meeting and uh, 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 felt that. It, it really should remain. It makes a statement on the street. Um, we wouldn't want to see a tree of that size uh, it, it, that's in, it, in the condition it's in, in particular, to be removed. I think it's, uh, again, it's uh, it something in the, in the public vista that we want to preserve. Well, I, I understand and appreciate that. And I, I appreciate the, uh, the detailed explanation as well. Um, and, and of course I respect <clears throat> Nantucket and, and the beautification of Nantucket. And as a matter of fact, uh, we've put quite a bit of energy and have a lot planned. Um, John McLaughlin on the HDC just approved our plans to um, restore and renovate that building because it is almost 200 years old, a historic site. Um, and obviously 40 years is a long time um, for a tree. Vis visually, it's clear it's an older tree. Um, and so I appreciate you having me at, at the meeting and I, I've heard everything you said. And um, I guess I would just appreciate uh, the opportunity to make a few points for consideration. Um, the first one being that the tree significantly overhangs the building. And as a result, the building is right where you see the tree. It's so close to the building that basically the entire roof and siding is almost entirely rotted off. So, that was prior to the, to the tree being thrown. Right. That damage is done prior to the tree being thrown. Right. Okay, that that is uh, probably the the fact. Um, but regardless, the tree in its location it causes a lot of damage to the building. There's a ton of moisture there. I so I you know as the person who recently bought the 
building. Um, I didn't, I don't know what the policy is, but I, I didn't see any notifications. I looked through all the town paperwork, you know, I went through all the proper steps and I, I don't know if maybe there's a database I'm supposed to be checking. I, I did check online on the town website. I, it just came as a real shock to me, to be honest. And, and so um, anyways, I'm, I'm, you know, paying the money to replace everything about the building and, and restore it and make the whole corner there uh, beautiful and amazing because it was kind of a total dump, uh, excuse my French, and there were dead shrubs all along it and it was just a mess. Uh, and I'm not blaming anybody, it was just dilapidated and old and the current couple owners didn't wanna put any money into it. I have a very small business, uh, you know, local entrepreneur and we're doing everything we can to make the corner look exceptional and frankly all i've heard has been positive feedback from the community saying man i never even knew there was a building there come around the corner it looks great so i just want to point out there's a significant amount of damage done to the building already then in the actual pruning process even more damage done all the trims smashed up has to be replaced no big deal. I mean, I'm not asking anybody to care about my financial problems. I'm just pointing out that once the building's repaired, you have a very large, very old tree overhanging a building that's a historic building that I'm now paying to repair due to the tree. It seems a little un unfair. Okay. And in addition to that, the tree itself is near its end of life. It has been practically mauled to death by Bartlett or whoever touched it. It's like a trunk with a couple of twigs off the top. I don't think it's a gorgeous centerpiece statement when you come around the corner on Orange Street. My proposal, and I can show you our landscaping plan for <clears throat> everything we're doing to improve the space, includes three new trees along the same line. I just, I don't see how anything I'm proposing or requesting is either unreasonable or not in the best interest of the corner and, um, and the beautification of, of Nantucket. Um, so again, I appreciate you clarifying for me the, tr the town's claim to the tree and I don't dispute it. I am a little frustrated because you know, it costs millions of dollars to barely get anything done on Nantucket. And it's just a total shock that it renders the whole space virtually useless. And on top of that, I'm incurring costs. And now I have this huge liability of this old tree hanging over the building I just paid to repair. And I have no problem doing whatever needs to be done to make the street look right. You were talking about poplars before. I live on Potwine Lane, uh, Pollywog Pond Road, and we've got 40 poplars along the adjacent property. And I literally watched the tops, the two thirds of the thing snap off and come crashing down, nearly missing houses. I had to cut two down that were overhanging my house. It's not an exaggeration for me to say that a 40 year old tree, five feet away from my building, which has already damaged the building multiple times, is a legitimate concern for the safety and well being of the people in the building as well as the building itself. You guys yourself said it's at least 40 years old. I'm just asking you to reconsider. Isaiah, can I just say, as a member of the tree committee, I, I have seen the corner. It's cleaned up considerably where you took the cedars and stuff away from the building. A lot of that stuff was creating moisture problems before. We're, we're a tree advisory committee. Um, you know, if I don't want to speak for, for everybody, but you could, your, your option, we're an advisory committee. Your option is to go to the selectmen after, if you don't um, like what the committee says. But, you know, I, I, I see the tree as it has good clearance over the building right now. Um, you did a good job down there and I hope you continue to do more. I just wanted to let you know that option about tree beyond the tree advisory committee. Thank you. I appreciate that. And one thing, uh, you, you, uh, the, 
the first part of the process before you go to the selectmen is, is, is I have to hold a hearing uh, on, on the matter. And if there's any objections, and certainly there would be objections from the tree committee as, as, as individual town, town citizens uh, uh, to that. So you could anticipate a no, uh, and that would trigger a hearing with the selectmen. That so you know, and that's that's basically the process. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yep. So you're welcome to pursue that that tech. Okay. If you so desire, but we hope you don't, because I think the tree is the tree makes a statement, and we and we love to see it stay. Okay, I appreciate that. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Isaiah. Okay, thank you. All right, Karsten Rainamo, you're up. Just have to unmute yourself, Karsten. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Everybody, hear me? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Good afternoon, everybody. Karsten, uh, we were talking about. We're here talking about the couple of trees on the corner of uh, Lower Pleasant and uh, right across from the old fire station. I've, already, I've had a very uh, quick converse, conversation with Dave Shampoo and uh, it's been brought to my knowledge that the trees that are, uh, are on my property, but they are owned by the town because the town planted them, got Roy Ryder's, uh, Roy Ryder who owns the property a couple of generations ago, gave the town permission to put the trees on his property, which now, now I own. So I would just like to find out uh, that I, I plan to put a building on that lot. And obviously the trees are right inside the building. <laughs> Already they're in the way. Uh, so I just uh, thought that we would, I talked to Dave and I, I believe that uh, we're, I don't know what the right way of handling this is. I'll I'll look to your guidance. Well, the history of I, I think I, I told you, Karsten, with in our conversation, the history of these was uh, you know it was money that uh, uh, that was spent uh, planting. I think we planted seventy five elms, various places around around uh, the island, in particular. Uh, you know the midtown, the midtown area, and uh, I believe you were. A, I believe you were a, a, a recipient of one of the trees. Might, might have been. <laughs> yeah. And your mother. Very good. And so I, I mean, it, it, you know, at the time, uh, sure. we got we got permission we got permission slips from from all the homeowners, you included. Uh, uh, you know to plant. Uh, to plant the trees that we planted, and they've uh, they've all thrived. Uh, and those two are pretty good specimen, uh, uh, pretty good examples of uh, of how healthy they are. Uh, sure. Well, time march marches on, Dave, and now I want to build a building on the property. So how do we how do we deal with it? Well, I think as I as I told Isaiah, you know, I think our feel is as as a committee is we we really would like them to stay there, uh, and 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 but you know, and you're and we can have a hearing about it. Um, there's. There's no way you can rework the. Uh, why, why does the building have to be that close to the, to the road? Well, for uh, for one thing, as you know, the lot is small. Yep. And uh, the the zoning board has changed. They want everything now in that neighborhood to be zero frontage. Yep. So that, as you know, they want the front door of the building to be right next to the sidewalk. Yep. And they want the parking in the back. Yep. And that's the way the, the as you know, there's already a driveway in the back. There's a right of way going over to the uh, building that the uh, the, 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 the uh, community sailing building that was mm -hmm. put up. Yep. 
it's been designed that way because that's right. the way the town wanted it. Okay. So there's no there's no possible way of, of sure. the, the the building the building is small as it is. It's a five thousand square foot lot. It's only going to be a you know it is what it is. It's a small lot. Right. So in order to go the the those trees are. Um, it's not like they were a foot on the property. There's one there that's three or four feet. I mean, it's impossible to build anything there with those trees. So that's, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever you you guys think, whether we can, you know, transplant them somewhere good or however we do it, but it, it, it's not going to work to leave them there. Rob? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Carson, for uh, coming in to talk to us today about this. I, I think what I'm hearing is that you know the town uh, spent some time to meaningful, meaningfully uh, plant uh, the tree canopy along many of the corridors uh, in town uh, with permission from uh, many of the homeowners who wanted to be part of this uh, streetscape beautification program. Uh, these trees have now been allowed to mature and are now really integral uh, to the character of the community and these particular neighborhood areas. I know this is a pretty well and, and busy area and there's a lot of new development that's planned or happening in the area. And particularly with what you just mentioned about zoning changes and zero clearance and entrances and exits, you know, those things are changed. As you mentioned, you know, things have changed, uh, but the trees kind of aren't really, they're not paying attention to those changes. So it sounds to me like the committee may need to do a little homework with the planning and land use folks over uh, that include zoning and have some discussions about this because I can clearly see or hear that there's uh, a bit of a conflict happening between uh, planned projects and uh, and current zoning, uh, with you know the plans that certainly uh, were carried out a generation ago, and are expected to continue to be invested in to keep this beautiful tree canopy alive and growing here on the island. So, I guess from my perspective. Uh, we see a lot of conflicts and, and just different issues that overlap and compete with one another. And this sounds like one of them. Um, and, and maybe it could be solved on site, um, but I, I'd like to at least be able to reach out along with the, uh, the chair, uh, the, the tree warden to have the discussion uh, with the planning and land use folks, uh, and then be able to maybe uh, have a separate meeting, Karsten, uh, to talk about how this particular site would fit into that. that that's, that's fine uh, with me. Um, if there was any possible way of locating a building by leaving those trees, I would be all for it. Okay. But the building that is going going there, like I say, with maybe zero frontage or one, only one foot right to the sidewalk or whatever, we're talking about a building that's under a thousand square feet. It's, we're not talking about a Taj Mahal here. You know, there's going to be a, a building there with, with five, maybe five parking spots in the back section of it. And that's all that lot will accommodate, parking-wise, zoning-wise, every, every which way. So, you know, the, and the trees are right there. I mean, if, the, if I could pull the building back three or four feet or four or five feet at least, and then you're talking about building maybe a, a building the size of a garage or, you know, half the size of what of what is allowed there. It, it's it's virtually impossible. So what's the uh, intended uh, use of the building? Well it's a retail it'll be a, I'm not sure yet. It's a it's a it will be a commercial building, possibly a real estate office or a small retail shop, something along those lines. Um it, it just a small you know it's going to be a small office or a or a small uh, retail building, something. Do you know what the footprint is that you're looking for? Uh, the size of the building? Yes. The size of the lot. 
the lot size is 5,000 square feet. Okay. And then the footprint of the building will be approximately 24 by, uh, say, 30, 36, 38. So you're right around 1,000 square feet. No, here, here's, 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 here's a thought. Um, Judy Brownell was also a recipient of, of, you know, where David Allen's lot was, where she built the, uh, the, the, the Henry's Jr. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and what, and th there, that's, that's another one of those, uh, those elms that we planted at the time before the building was, and she built the building around the, uh, uh, if you look at it, so it would really, you could, you could do it by setting the, setting the building back in, you know, in a similar fashion on either end. And, 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 and projecting the, the face of the building forward, you know, maybe a little design change, possibly, I'm just thinking, you know, that, that the, the, the parking for the, the, the parking for the lot has already been laid out by the planning board. Yep. yep. There's always, a, there's, a, there's a, they did not want to enter that lot from Pleasant Street at yep. all. So as you know, the, 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 the entrance going into the sailing building comes in from the rear of my lot. Yep. And they only wanted one entrance for both lots. So that's why mine will have to come in that way too. This has all been decided by the planning, yep. planning board ahead of, you know. And there, I can tell you there is no possible way that we could move the building back because you'd only have 10 or 12 feet left of the 20 feet that you need or, to, or to 24 feet is about the very minimum that you can go for the width of a building. Yeah, You don't want to make anything less than 24. But like I said, we're not talking about a, a, big, a big building here. Yeah. So we need to find a way to either transplant those trees. Uh, I think you mentioned that the one of the spades on the island that one of, I talked to uh, Angus McVicker is, and I told you, you agreed the, the, his spade is not big enough to move him. So we would have to go to the next size one that you, you mentioned that uh, uh, the gentleman had there, I forgot his last name. And if we could move those trees, uh, I, I'd be happy to put them up. One nice place for them would be right across the street where that nice, beautiful uh, meeting hall was just directed, right? Just ne right next door to the New fire, I mean, the old fire station, wouldn't they look nice in front of that building, Dave? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I ask a, a quick question, Carson, if you don't mind? Is there, sure. is there a way to, uh, it sounds like the uh, limiting factor is the parking in the back. And I understand that the planning board has, has pushed the parking and access um, off of Pleasant Street, but is there any way to accommodate part of the parking in front, not the, not the entirety of it, but somehow find a compromise with the planning board um, to allow these trees to stay with a design revision of the parking? It is absolutely impossible. And if I was at your meeting today and I showed you the plot plan, you would agree with me 100% that there is no other way. We're only talking about five parking spots across the back, you know, in a, in a, in a small lot. You know, it's not, it's not big it, it, and it's in a shared driveway. So, you know, the, um, I, I don't think that those trees would be able to be transplanted anywhere on that lot because there's, between the driveway and the parking spots, and the little in the in the bit small building, it, it pretty much takes up the whole. Um, like I say, I'm 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 I I'd love to save the trees as much as you guys, and I'm willing to work with you. However, we do this, I, I just don't think that it's possible there. I think I think all of you would agree with me as as soon as you vi you know visioned it and went down and looked at it, or if I showed you the layout. I, I, uh, I might be wrong, but I think probably that would, I think, I don't think I would be wrong. Any other comments? Uh, I mean, I've looked at, I've looked at the trees. I mean, 
again, I think we've got, we got to have a, we have to have a, we have to have a hearing on this. And I think, I think that, I think your best option would be to go, to have the hearing. We want to keep the trees. I think it, it, you know, the selectmen can hash, that's their job to hash this out. Um, I mean, it's, I've looked at the trees and I think they're, you know, if it does come to transplanting them, I think they're transplantable. Maybe uh, not, sorry to interrupt. Maybe not with any, any equipment that's available here. Uh, they're, they're, they're not as big as, uh, as some of the other elms. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Tim Brown. Tim Brown. His, his tree spades like 95 or maybe a hundred inch spade. So that, that it's, they're transplantable. Let's put it that way. But uh, certainly we planted the trees there with, with, with the, the purpose of enhancing the, enhancing the, 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 the roadway. Rob. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think the, the overarching goal of uh, redevelopment of the Mid Island area uh, certainly includes uh, tree canopy. So uh, I'd like to certainly uh, reach out to PLUS and have a discussion uh, to come back to the committee with and, and to discuss, include Mr. Rainamo in the, those discussions uh, to be able to see if, if we can come to some conclusion that includes the trees or uh, accounts for the trees in some other way. Yeah, and this is another exa perfect example of the planning board, uh, you know, not considering a town tree yet again. And it happens over and over and over and over. Yes. And it puts it puts new owners in in this position that you're in, Carson. And it's an unfortunate position to be in, especially if you know it's something you didn't know about. Is this are these uh, trees uh, on the deed in any way? Well, that's uh, that's just funny you should bring that up because I asked Dave about that too, and, and the answer to that is no. There is nothing. There is no. There is no. Uh, nothing in my deed that I bought from. I purchased the land from the uh, the sale club, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, there's nothing in that deed that says anything about uh, that, that, that the 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 trees were one were town owned trees. And, they, and or anything about an easement that would allow the town to keep the trees there. And I asked Dave about this when we had this short discussion, and uh, and I said, "Geez, wouldn't wouldn't it have said something in the in the deed if?" And he said, "As as you know, Carsten, he said there was there's a uh, there's a lot of things that were done, you know, maybe like on a handshake, or but obviously it wasn't documented." These these sound like they they might have been though this this particular tree right. planting did get some letters. Yeah, I mean we we got the letters right, Dale. I mean, um, uh, I mean all the letter all all the all the things were signed all the plantings were signed off on by by the homeowners, but it was it wasn't it wasn't conveyed to the deeds in any way as far as I know. We just have the easement to plant the trees. We have the record of those. I don't think any town planted trees on private property was ever put on deeds. It was, again, it was done via handshaking, even when property changed hand, the owner that owned the property told the new owners that this is a town tree, you can't touch it. Mm -hmm. so it was, Carson, what is the exact plot address of, of mm -hmm. this property? Do you, do you know the address of it? Uh, I may be able to look it up here quickly. Well, West Creek Road is the address. Uh, it, fr it runs simply that we, we do have a, f a fairly complete inventory at this point, including yeah. uh, the town trees that are located on private property, as far as, as, as a reference for people to check outside of something that may not be on a deed. These two do show up. Uh, at that location at the corner of West Creek and uh, Pleasant. Okay, that's great. The, the actual address of the property is 14 West Creek Road. 14 West Creek. Okay, thank you. 
and you're seeing them there, Rob, on the inventory. So, uh, Carson, is this something that you would uh, be available to uh, talk with the uh, planning and land use folks with uh, a representative from the tree committee? Sure. You know, uh, doing something next. If there if there was any other way of doing this, Rob, I would I would certainly consider it. I think that you're going to agree with me when you look at what I've scaled out and what's available. But to meet all the planning board things and the pl the parking requirements and the setbacks and all that, if 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 you didn't move those trees and you tried to work around them, you, you basically are making that lot unbuildable. There is no possible way to build anything, but maybe a, you know, something that may be 24 square or something, you know, something really tiny building. But in order to put a building of, like I told you, something around the 24 by 36, Range, you know, to get in order to dig the cellar and get it in there. It's, I think the trees are in the way. I don't see any way around that. I think, I think, like I say, I think, uh, wouldn't you agree with me on that, Dave? Well, I mean, you certainly couldn't build a building that size with the trees where they are. Right. And that's, and that's a pretty small building. I think, but I think, I think a, a meeting with with the uh, uh, the, the uh, land use sure. would be would be in order. Okay. As a as kind of a step. Okay, that's fine with me. I think it would be. But I think it, I agree with Rob. But I think it. Uh, I put a deed right there. So, uh, Carson, lastly, can I um, ask you about the rumor that uh, this is going to be the new home for the Downey Flick? <laughs> that, 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 that is wrong. Very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, of the, one of the things that we thought about having, having that on the corner there would be a, a little tackle shop or a little fishing type shop, um, you know, a little fishing tackle shop or possibly a a, a small shop like that, like I say, that it is not going to be anything too large because zoning and parking and all of those things stop me from doing anything too large on that property. And I, I don't want to do that. Um, yes, you could maybe go into a two story building and look for all kinds of waivers on parking and, and, and things like that, but that's not going to make that kind of look good and that's not my intent. All right, well, let's. I'll reach out to plus. Yeah, let's, we'll let's, let's, let's do that up. and we can meet up, meet about it and then we can go from there. But okay. like I said, I, I think the hearing and then going before the selectmen on if See what the planning, land use uh, people have to say about it. Well, what would that be? Another Zoom meeting? Uh, probably. Probably, I would think so. Yeah, I don't think I don't think they, I don't think they meet in person anymore. Well, they, do. Yeah. Uh, whatever it is. No, the town they, boards do. Yeah. All right. So you'll let me know when yeah, whenever we. Yep. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Thanks for, very much. Okay. We'll thank, be thank you guys for everything. Have a, have a yeah. great day. Bye now. Okay. So uh, let's see. I guess we'll move to Mr. Perlman. Uh, is uh, are you? You're not on the agenda, though. Correct. Yeah, if I could just introduce uh, Ed. He uh, he and I talked yesterday, and I suggested that he uh, come to the meeting for the. Uh, 
public uh, comment portion. And uh, Mr. Perlman lives at uh, the corner of Washington, or I, I think just took ownership at the corner of Washington and Francis, is that correct? Correct. Well, one house over, 59 Washington. Correct. Yeah. Um, and the discussion on the tree uh, that uh, Vic Ferentella brought to our attention um, okay. that got discussed last time. So that I, I, so Mr. Perlman wanted to come in for some clarification on our decision. And I suggested that he attend the meeting for the public uh, comment portion. Yeah, um, yeah I, I just, I, I just, I'm just here to ask for a little clarification and help for uh, the, the process going forward. Um, you know, I, I don't know what has taken place in the past. We, you know, we just closed on the house yesterday and uh, I didn't think I had standing to call anybody or do anything until, you know, after we closed. And uh, we are curious what, you know, what the, what the plans are for the tree stumps and the tree that's, that remains at the end of the driveway at uh, 59 Washington. That, that driveway um, doesn't come out to Washington, it go, goes on to um, um, Fayette, uh, Fayette, right? Yeah. Maybe it's Fayette or Francis, I couldn't Francis, remember. Uh, oh, Lafayette, I think it's Lafayette, isn't it? Lafayette. Lafayette. Yeah, Lafayette. Okay. Yeah. And um, I guess what, you know, what I, what I mentioned to the Ben, and I think you, you all know it's, I think, some of the, uh, one or two trees were already taken down and there's several st big stumps that were that have been left. Uh, and then there's another tree that's still there. But to us, it looks like, or it looked like it was dying, uh, but I, I'm not 100% sure because we were looking at it in the you know, winter months. Um, but uh, what is there, um, you know, is almost in the middle of the driveway. It's hard to get in and out. It's um, uh, if you were backing out and it was, you know, in the evening and it's dark out, you, you might not see it. We would, but maybe a, a guest wouldn't. And uh, my understanding is that it, it already, there has already been an approval or plans to remove what's there. And I, I so I have a, several questions. One is uh, when will that happen? And the second part of the question is, since uh, Ben, you, you had told me, and then listening today, uh, um, you guys don't like to remove a tree without replacing it with either another tree or something. And I kind of wanted to, to try, try to understand a little bit more what, what that plan would be. And if I could maybe have some uh, influence, if you will, or some input, input into w whatever it is that would be replace that uh, the tree and the tree stumps. From our standpoint, we would wish that the tree and the stumps be removed and that's it and, and nothing re replaced. I don't know if that's possible. And I don't, I don't think from Ben yesterday, I don't think that that is in the plans. Uh, I, I guess I wanna get a little information on it that, that the plans are to, to replace and do something with it. Um, is there, is there anything that uh, you can help me with here to, to just information wise and, and process wise? Well, I think, I think it's the same, the same thing as uh, uh, what we discussed with item number two at 12 North, North Water Street. If there was, we, we want to relocate a tree in the, the, uh, the removed trees location. That's, that's, that's kind of like a pol it's a policy really yeah. and yeah. Uh, and it's and it's on your property so it, we can't very well say to the to the to the abutting homeowner well we, we want to put a tree over here I mean we have a location for a tree already right there and and it's it's been been there for quite a long time I think it was, uh, you know, it's it. The tree we 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 agreed to uh, have it removed, uh, but we want to replant it in the same spot. In exactly the same spot. There exactly the same spot. If we 
if um, uh, I'd have to look at the, the property one, but if we, would we be able to move it a, a, a few feet, not onto somebody else's property, but move it a little, you know, a, a little bit over so that there might be a little easier to get or in and out of a drone. You, you, you know, I mean, it's, I would, is, as long as it's more or less in the same location, you know, I mean, yeah. To me, I it, I wouldn't quibble about yeah foot, but uh, you know, it, uh, Rob. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess we we did review this uh, with the committee last time. Um, if you if you allow me to, I could share the screen um, just to remind everybody. Would that be okay? I, just to confirm, Mr. Permlin, is this the uh, location we're talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right, so I think the discussion was simply, if we if you look here, you can see the driveway was constructed around this. Yeah. There's, there's some indications that, you know, wheel path is over the root uh, section of the tree. It's pretty clear, you know, this is a classic, um, the, the tree is in the way of human activity. Um, so we get this kind of discussion um, with the committee a lot, and that's really the predominant um, discussion about takedowns is centers around how the trees are an inconvenience to human activity. And as I stated before, you know, the, the, the island itself has a, has a, uh, uh, pretty amazing tree canopy that, you know, these folks and uh, this department are charged with maintaining. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think this is a, a good example of, you know, how a tree canopy, even despite this, this thing's fight, it's, it's uh, losing on a couple of spots where it's been trimmed or cut, but it's still thriving um, in the, the rest of it that remains. And so, the idea is that it is a value and it's part of a larger picture uh, mm -hmm. that needs to be respected by us all. And I think, you know, the, the idea would be to replace at some point, replace something in kind uh, at this same location uh, to continue to have that, that web of uh, the island's character uh, maintained. Mm -hmm. um can I, when the, is it possible to, to re, just get those two stumps out of there, uh, you know, period, and, and leave the, the, the two tree, the, uh, what, what's there, just clean up the, the stumps and, you know, not do anything, but just the stumps and, and leave what's there. Assuming those uh, the what's there is not dying or uh, you know that they're they're healthy, is that possible at, at all? Uh, I mean, I would leave that up to the experts, and there's quite a few of them here on the call. Uh, I'm not sure how integral those are to the the rest of the health of the tree, but um, we could probably start with uh, Dale to comment on that. You know, it was a, it was a multi-stem maple. I mean, multi-stem elm. And the reason the stump was cut like that was that was the only way it could be cut. There's no other way to get it down any lower than it is. Uh, the first one with the most rot, I cut that down 20, 20 years ago. And then I just took another piece out maybe five years ago. And the reason it's cut that way, that's all the way to be cut because that's where these so for something that's been cut 20 years ago and five years ago, uh, at least, you know, the, the, uh, the larger of the stumps that are there appear to be in uh, healthy shape, uh, not rotted. So I wasn't sure if I should write on or not, but Don was out one day. 
And I just wanted to write vacation. Okay. And then um, on one card, I signed it okay, PBJ. Yeah, I'm I'm having a little trouble hearing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on. Somebody's got some background. The way this stuff was cut was was the only way to cut them without doing any damage to the other part of the tree at the time. Right. So it could not be cut any different than the way I cut right now. Right. It's all originating from the same root zone, so you really it's can't. Yeah, you can't take out the stumps in their entirety. In other words, you can't grind them down underground and maintain the health of the rest of the tree without, without, you know, killing the whole thing. So, can I, can I just ask for a refresher? What was the decision on the last meeting? Was that was to the the tree was is going to be taken down or it's not going to be taken? Yeah, I mean, it's not a it's not a it's not a it's not a great tree at this point. Um, and I think we, we agreed that the, the tree could come down, but the location would be saved for planting another tree. In the and it wouldn't, we would, I mean, we would, I don't see that we would be putting a multi-stem tree back there. No. no. Oh, okay. It would, be, it would be like a two and a half to three inch tree. Yeah, okay. And, uh, yeah, okay, I, I, okay. I mean, I, I would just say in, in no general, I'm not in favor of putting trees back in harm's way myself. I mean, I think if we could, you know, find the right thing and, and move it over to the to the committee's liking, um, that would be favorable for me. Yeah. I mean, I, it, I mean, it, basically the the right hand, if you're, as you're looking at it from the street, the right it looks like that right hand part of it is really right on the property line because of the fence. The fence uh, looks like it lines right up with that. So. Probably, yes, I think so. Yeah, but um, so, so Dave, is it, would it be my understanding that um, the plan is just to remove everything altogether, the stumps, the existing, and, uh, and it, you know, because it, <laughs> to call it an eyesore is, it's an eyesore the the way it looks now, but to replace it with another tree is it, it is fine. It, it it's fine. I I, yeah. uh, I I didn't I didn't know what we, if I, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if you were going to leave something, add, remo remove, keep a stump. But it, it sounds to me like remove everything, put it, and and you know it'll look a thousand times better and. It's the right thing to do. Um, my question then is, what, what's the timing? How how do um, when how and how who do I talk to? Or well, you're, talk, you're talking to the you're you're talking to the people that you have to talk to. I think right now. Okay. Um, th there's one caveat on removing it, uh, and and that is we can't we. Because of Dutch elm disease, you, we cannot cut elm wood uh, during the growing season. It has to be done when it's dormant. So we've missed that. We've missed that window. Uh, okay. It would have to happen uh, from no, later on in the year, November, no, after, okay. after the leaves drop. Yeah, so it's, uh, um, it, it's got to stay there. It can't come down. Okay, but can we? Have some a little assurance or something that you know come November, December, January. Yeah, I, I, that, don't, I don't see a problem with that. It's be a fairly easy takedown, yeah. and we could uh, get the stump ground uh, as you know in the the normal yeah. things uh, next spring. And, yeah. Okay. And okay. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. Per that's perfectly fine. That, that's all good. Um, okay. Is there anything? Else that I need you, you need from me or no, no uh, anything that I can help? No, okay. Uh, this is very Herman, I would say you know Rob McNeil is on on the if you have a question about uh, the process of how uh, how it works from a town uh, work order point of view, Rob could educate us. Sure. So the meeting minutes will reflect that uh, the action if there's. Uh, I think typically we vote on this sort of thing. So I'd ask the committee to vote 
uh, including if a, a tree planting to replace the takedown, uh, if there's a species uh, that's recommended, it would follow along with what uh, Dave mentioned. We would do a uh, scheduled takedown uh, during the dormant season, uh, then grind the stump out to prepare the area for a new planting. And mm -hmm. when that occurs, uh, that you know that's obviously during a, the the planting season. So I think it's just a the work order system would be a service request that would turn into a work order and uh, follow this through until uh, the final planting. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, that sounds good. Uh, I, don't, I don't have any other questions or, or anything, but I do thank you guys for uh, letting me uh, join and, you know, letting me be able to talk and bring up my uh, issue without having been on the agenda or, or, or anything. And thank you, Ben, for uh, your advice yesterday uh, to, to join. That, that was good. Yep, sure very helpful. Thank yeah. you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm gonna sign off here. Uh, So does the committee want to vote on this as yeah. a takedown? I think we, didn't we, didn't we already vote on it? No, we were going, you decided that you wanted to talk to the neighboring property to see um, what their thoughts were on if you were going to move the tree over. But you did not, um, okay. not vote on the removal. Okay. So uh, could I make a motion that we uh, vote on the removal or? Make a motion to vote on the removal and and re, and um, let, let's and replant in the same location, approximately. Yeah, or approximately on that location. on that property, right? With a single stem instead of a multi stem, like I said. Right. Well, right. we don't plant multi stems anyways, but it would just be putting a tree in harm's way. It doesn't seem to make sense. And it it would have to be uh, I think it'd have to be like an elm or like a sweet gum, something that'll that that. Um, that uh, will grow in, in a wet area because the water table is very high there. Okay. Okay. So is that clear enough for the what we're voting on? I think so. Uh, right, Rob? Take, take uh, down with replacement, single stem. Yep. yep. Of, of, that will tolerate the area in generally the same location. Right. Okay. We have a, we have a motion on that then? Yes, so moved. Any second? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. I have one thing to bring up. Um, I think it's 45. I'm sorry. I should have had my email prepared. Um, it was a recent takedown and it was two diseased trees and the patron wants to know why only one of them was removed. 45 Washington, something like that. Orange. Orange. Orange tree. Yeah, I believe it was orange. Yeah, yes. the, the other uh, one, was, I think the other one was still alive. Correct, Dale? The one you said was alive was in bad shape and the one that you said was alive was dead. So right. both, of them, both of them should have come down when I got okay. there. All right, I, I was questioning that because it, I looked but, at I looked at I looked at those. The reason I claimed it because I climbed them, so okay. that's why I said they was in bad enough shape to come down. I didn't just All right. make on an assumption. I climbed both of them to look at them, and I knew they was in bad enough shape to come down. Okay, so they're 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 both dead. I I, I didn't realize that. I thought it was just the, the tree on the left hand side. By the time I pruned the one that is standing, it it just there's nothing now worth leaving in the sidewalk as a tree. Okay, all right. So the were those both elms? No, no, they were high locus, locus, right? Oh, locus. Yep. So uh, how did we leave that deal? Is that an outstanding it work order? The tree committee to, to get back with me so I can remove it. We'll need a motion to remove the second one on the left hand side, and then Dale can, I can get a work order in for Dale. Okay. 
You got a motion on that? Now we're going to vote to replant in that same area? I, I would like to. I think everybody would like to. I mean, it's. Do. That's our, that is our, that's our overarching policy, right? Unless there is. I, I don't know. Yeah. I yeah, generally we want to go back in the same location with the same species unless there's a reason not to either go back or change species. Um, I mean, and change I think species, just, I mean, that'd be fine, but uh, um, something that's appropriate there. We, uh, the only thing I'd say is that we've, we've shifted away from um, various hybrid species of elms to the new harmony. I think the one thing I learned from Dale was the, uh, the Valley Forge that was mentioned there on North Water was a, uh, a trial way back when and uh, grows rather oddly. It just it doesn't, it grows rapidly. And, and then it the valley force today. ends up having kind of an odd shape to it. Yep. All right, so we're looking for a motion to remove the second tree, uh, followed by a recommendation on uh, what goes back, or if, if we're going back in both locations uh, for two new ones. Sounds like honey locust is the, uh, was the takedown. So we would go back with the same. We could. Uh, it's. Uh, yep. We have any uh, any discussion on that? As far as. Well, we, we need a motion. London plane, any, anything but that's upright. Okay. And London. there's enough room for the for yeah. Uh, there there is enough room for that, right? Yes. Okay. So, um, I'll make the motion to. Remove the second tree, and we'll replace both with uh, like species or species to be determined. I don't know what you think about that, Dave. Yeah, I mean that's that's fine. I mean whatever's appropriate to the location. I mean as long as there's room, we could replant honey locust. We could plant. I think we should replant two of the same species. Keep it the same. Okay. So motion to remove. The second tree and replant with two of the same species. Okay, you got a second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. Okay, we talked about 12 North Water, um, which is just that was Michael VC who would not want the tree to be removed. We discussed that, you discussed that. I think yep. it's fair to move right into old business. So in that case, we would be going back with the tree, but it would be a different species of elm. Yep. You know, my guess, my guess on this, on this particular property, uh, my guess is, is, the town didn't plant those trees, but they are in, in, in they are in town sidewalk and not on the property. Uh, probably a previous homeowner homeowner planted those trees. My guess, Dale. Where is this North Water? Where, where were we just talking? Uh, the the where the two honey locusts are. Oh, an orange. Yep. Yeah. I am sure Roger planted them two trees. Oh, Roger planted them. Yes. Okay. All right. And even if the homeowner do plant them in town sidewalk, they lose all rights. Oh, I know. No, I know. I'm just so it was just just a thought. That's all. I mean, I think I think Roger planted them trees. Okay. All right. I can confirm that with him today. Yep. All right. Uh, we want to go to uh, new business. Yes. Um, 62 Main Street, uh, Murray's Doggery Shop. Yep. Yeah, I, I brought that up at the last meeting. It's good Dale's here today. He can talk about that tree. I just, just to, um, as a refresher, you know, driving up Main Street, Tree City, USA, that, that uh, tree in front of Murray's just seems like 
it's not getting any any healthier. Um, so my suggestion was at the last meeting was uh, for tree advisory committee members to view it and see what we thought about taking it down and replacing it with, with something else. I, I think we want to take them down for the fact that they are not healthy because they've been girdled to death. Buried? And not because uh, the store owner would like to have them removed. Right. Yeah. It wasn't a request to the store owner. It just was something I had been noticing just for... It, 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 it's been girdled to death. Oh, girdled. Girdled. Yeah. Both of them have just literally been girdled to that. Yeah. So, I mean, they're never going to get any better. No. No. So, I mean, I think, I think it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it's definitely a liability, particularly visually looking up the street. Uh, well, that's an old picture. The very first tree, that's a very old picture. They, they, they have been thrown since this picture was taken. Yeah. But they're just sort of getting smaller and smaller over time, Dale, with, that, with not much. I mean, I, 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 I get what, you, what you're saying, but I'm just saying we, we got an old picture up there. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's all been taken care of. Yeah, it's not so much that. Would you say that they're getting, with, with the care that, uh, you know, you've been giving them, are they, do they have a fighting chance? or? They, got, they, don't, they don't stand a chance. Yeah, yeah, so that's I think that's kind of where we are now. You know, they don't really stand a chance and, they are a real focal point on Main Street, so. And then you need to, if we own Main Street, you need to look at the one across the street in front of the insurance company as well. Okay. That one right there. That one. That one, yeah. You're saying that one's not in good shape or that one is? Oh, it's not in good shape at all. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean, these wouldn't be able, we wouldn't be able to take these down until November anyways. No. Correct. So uh, while we're talking about this, there's a, there's a, a spot missing um, that we, we just ground the stump here. Uh, so there's going to be a pretty big hole when we take those two, uh, take this one down um, with these two missing, but we can get those replanted certainly. And then same up here, if we're talking about these two, um, I think that's that's a big discussion point is, you know, get them in and get them going. The ones in front of the bank, as you mentioned uh, previously, those are going pretty well. Yeah, you know, these locations the, would, I think would call for maybe some really good sized trees. Uh, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking four inch. Maybe even bigger, Dale, you know? Something that, uh, that'll that fill up the space. I mean, it's an important location. Yeah. Yeah. All, all you know, that's an important location in front of the, the, the two in front of the insurance company former insurance company uh, is, is also, uh, you know, would, is a huge void right there. Yeah, it'd be nice to have like a, a, a four plus there anyways. Yeah, I, I'm thinking like a five to six inch, maybe something that something that that wouldn't look out of place with the other trees or near. What, what are you thinking species wise? Well, maybe, maybe more, you know, if we can get some, some bigger uh, new harmonies or something like that, that would be, I think that would be appropriate for Main Street. Okay. So are we talking about three trees removal now? I think so. Well, one's already down anyway. Right about where the vans are. There's a. Just thinking, if, if you look at that tree today, you can see it's such a liability because of people sitting in the sidewalk and walking yep, yep. in the sidewalk. This lead, I've taken that whole lead out, and it's just, it's just not in good shape. Yep. Yes. Great. So, can I then make the motion to to 
schedule these three trees for removal get at the appropriate time and um, we'll replant them with um, what we're going to consider larger calipers um, of new harmony elm if we can find them yeah i think we get we certainly have the funds to uh to 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 expend on on you know some good sized trees all right, so we'll be looking to uh, else. There's a motion to remove uh, these three and uh, to replace with some sizable five inch uh, plus new Harmony Elms. Uh, come removals would, would be uh, scheduled for uh, fall or winter and replacements uh, to follow. Okay, we have a motion on that. Motion, I'll second. Yeah, that's the motion. We're looking okay. for a second. Second? Yeah, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Approved. I was going to ask with the four inch trees, so there is that other, there was a big stump, and I'm not sure if you guys had it uh, um, grinded down right across from St. Mary's really close to main street right in the or right in the area you guys are talking about um i know i'm kind of springing this on the that we made is that where the katsura was dale no it has was a no we made when i took that in front of the uh, uh the real estate place oh okay yes exactly oh. i mean i kind of thought that location could use a sizable tree as a replacement. Yeah, and the maple next next to that should come down. That is in bad, bad shape. Yep. Yeah, it just, it looks, uh, that side of the street almost looks uh, treeless or, you know, very soon to be treeless. I guess we can uh, put that on the... Is this the one you're talking about? Um. That one right there is in terrible shape. This tree? Yes. Yeah. And then the stump behind the van. That stump has been ground. Yeah. This might be a case where uh, two trees come out and one goes back in. You know, they're pretty close to each other. And if you're going to do it, just split the difference. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Hannah, do you have the address of this location? It was just recently ground on Federal Street. Um, what is the business? What was it? Uh, let me, I can get you the address. I don't have the address. Now. I think I can get you the address. Um, but do you guys want to take a look at that this coming month? And I'll have it on the agenda for a motion to remove yeah. next, next meeting. We'll do that. Yeah. Uh, I just have a question while Dale's here. Like Dale, as far as your schedule goes, I mean, there, there's a couple of trees on island I have, have in mind to bring back up just for discussion that look really terrible. But, you know, how, how is your schedule shape up and besides the fact that you're always busy, but, you know, are removals more favorable at, at a certain time? It all depends on removing a maple or elm. Yeah, it's a couple of maples that look really, really bad. I don't even know the name of the street. I think because maple is such a brittle tree in a time, we can get a chance to remove one just for public safety. We need to get right on top of it. Got it. I'll, I'll have a little, it's a, they're, they're not really huge tall trees. That's like, right, uh, I don't know the name of the street, so forgive me for not being prepared, but uh, right across um, Westchester Street, where the uh, what's the restaurant there? I'm now really uh, American Seasons. American yeah. Seasons. That little street through oh. through there. That little cut through street. It's got some really nasty elm tree, uh, maple trees on it. But I'll bring that back for next meeting. I don't want to waste time on it today. Um, Mike, you can send me an email, and I can get it on the agenda once you. Okay. Have a so better... Lil, you're talking about Lily Street then. Is that what you're talking uh, about? It's not Lily Street. There's a little cut through street that it's Chester. Chester, correct. Chester. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
There's some really sad looking maple trees on, on Chester. Hey. I'm going to blank. But I think when it, when it comes to maple trees, because they're so brittle and verticillium does such a bad. Are the tree, the chest, they're not town trees. They're not town trees. Not, not this one. There was, it was the maple. One chest, the one has been removed. This, yeah, that, that thing there. That's been removed. That's been removed. There's the one behind it, probably that one is not, not looking so good these days either, but I'll, I'll get it on the agenda for next meeting and we'll take it from there. But those are not those are not town trees. Not town trees, no. Okay, okay, then then uh, they won't be on the agenda. Thanks for clarifying that. Okay, uh, tree grates around the trees in front of the national uh, in front of the Pacific Bank. I can remove them tomorrow morning. Yep. Yeah, we. I, I think we got to get rid of. I think you've probably gotten rid of just about all the grates, haven't you, Dale? <laughs> The last two, I can sneak down and it's okay with Rob to get rid of them tomorrow morning. Yep. And let's see. Uh, That's fine by me, Dale. I think it came up because uh, we were looking at those trees over at Murray's. Okay, yes, I can, if it's okay, I can get down to my morning first thing and get rid of them. All right, um, summer meeting scheduling. So, okay, I guess the, the question on those is simply this, um, and I don't know if there's a, a history here of maintenance at all, but um, those, the tree grates, when they first go in, they have, I think the idea behind them is that you remove the rings as the tree grows. So there's still a, uh, and it provides a potentially walkable surface uh, around the tree and still lets water through. So I don't know if we, DPW has ever uh, done that. And I don't actually see, I don't see any community, city or otherwise that has had that um, where they've actually removed the rings as the tree has grown. Uh, generally they come out but um, I, I just throw that out there uh, because there are uh, certainly people in the community that are very sensitive to change, uh, particularly in the streetscape. So if there's, if there's a, uh, a way, if there's a standard that we have followed in the past about cutting the rings back or if they're just too far gone uh, and it wouldn't make sense to, to remain in there, uh, we could continue to or we could maintain the tree well like we have on many other of the historic streets downtown is just uh, look to potentially uh, widen it out or refresh it with some new material. The, uh, I mean, the rings are, I mean, we have in the past removed rings uh, with a saw, you know, uh, it's, I think they're made that way, but uh, yeah, I, they, they get forget they get forgot uh, forgotten, and you know, all of a sudden they're they're girdling the tree. So I mean, that's I'm not a big fan of the tree grades. Well, they were initially set up to sort of let the tree get established. Yep. Root system wise. Yep. And then remove, but again, we get you get busy and you forget them, and all of a sudden the tree have. I've been girdled by them. Yep. Yeah, I think it was something in general architects were really excited about in the 80s and spec them everywhere. Uh, well, yeah. in some places. Yeah. I mean, it for a couple of years, once you get established, then you can remove them. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we need them anymore. So. All right, we'll get them out of there. I think that's the last two around town. Yep. Okay, last time we talked about the summer meeting schedule. Um, you guys wanted to double up on meetings and go uh, every other week. 
Yes. Every other week, yeah. And May and June are typically uh, really hard to get to for most people here present at the screen. Yeah. But uh, I talked to Erica Mooney and at town administration. What was mentioned last meeting, I think was mainly July and August. And it's just as simple as deciding what meetings you don't want to have, but I will need to know if you're not, if you're intending not to have a May meeting, I'll need to know that fairly quickly. So she doesn't put that on the calendar. Um, I would su suggest that we defer May, May and June. I mean, certainly if we have to meet for anything emergency wise, we'll, we'll do that. But um, whatever, listen to what anybody else has to say, of course. I mean, it's, it's a busy time for all of us, you know, so. Uh, Either emergencies or if we put like a time cap, I don't know if you guys. I think we have to get some sort of consensus here. So. Uh, yes, please. Do we want to meet every other month? Maybe every other month might be during the summertime would be better rather than rather than cancel two meetings in a row sure do june and june and august yeah i'd be in favor of that yeah june and august sounds good okay so why don't we why don't we do that so do we need a motion on this yes okay we got a motion uh move to meet uh uh, in June and August, skipping May and uh, July. Right. Got a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Where are we with tree advisory committee members? Like, I, I just lost touch with that. Like, uh, whose appointments are what, when? And um, that is something I also talked to Erica about. I can pull up everybody's in just a second. Um, but we do need to reach out to Whitfield Bourne. Um, he is contacted for every meeting. Um, I don't usually get a response. Uh, so we need to talk about um, Dave. I don't know if you can reach out to him and see if he's still interested in being on the tree advisory committee. Um, but if he is not, then we can put a, a seat up for availability. Okay, so we, I'll talk to Witt and, and uh, I'll get in touch with him. Um, and then that being said, if he does want to stay, then he will need to start attending meetings. I mean, yep. it, it is a requirement of being a part of the board. Right, he's missed quite a few meetings. Uh, is there is there something in the uh, in the the setup of the tree committee that that uh, that indicates what uh, how many I know you yeah, most a, most yeah. boards if you miss two or two or three meetings they recommend you sort of you know move on. Right. Yeah. When I spoke to Erica, she mentioned that uh, if Dave, you reach out to him and he does want to continue on, he, I believe he's, he's still here till the 2023. Um, and then if he continues not to attend meetings that the committee can vote to open the seat. Okay. All right. I'll, let's, uh, well, between now and, and, and July or June or whatever, between now and June, I will, because he's obviously doesn't have to attend next month. So uh, I will I will get in touch with them. Okay. Hopefully I run into him on the street. Yeah. I'm trying to pull up everybody's um, very quickly here. Okay, um, yep, so Whitfield born, his seat expires in 2023. Ben, yours expires 2021. So we will, I can help you get that application again for reapplying if you'd like. Um, Dave Shampoo, same, same boat, 2021. 
Mike Mazzarelli, 2023. John, you are till 2022. Uh, and Jeff, who is not here, also 2022. So Ben and Dave, <clears throat> we get that set up if you need any help. And yep. everybody else looks like oh, we're- Why don't you uh, forward us the, uh, just send us the, uh, the form, I guess. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then what you'll do is you send it back over to Eric Mooney. Okay. okay. I've never had to do this. Hannah, yeah. I think it would be helpful, I, at least from my perspective, it would be yeah. helpful to yeah. list the members uh, with their expiration dates uh, at the bottom of each agenda. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Keep that on. I mean, it, it'd be easy to update. Absolutely. Um, also, if you ever need to double check, it is on the town website. Thank you. What if I want to run for tree warden? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're in good hands there. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alice Intrigue. Careful what you wish for, right? Yeah. <laughs> Mike, are you going to make uh, make Nantucket great again? Uh, yeah. Well, I got to just pick the color of the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Yes, and 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 great is spelled G R A T E. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't pass that one up. <laughs> uh. All right, 20, 28 Pulpus Road, right of way clearing violation. I think, Rob, you. Yeah, so this is a, an interesting one. I'll, I'll bring up the uh, picture on this one. Um, actually, I think we had this discussion. John, we were joking about this a little while back about the rocks piled up on the side of the road. Yeah. And so it turns out um, we saw the beginnings or actually at the, at the tail end of this, this was um, construction ongoing at this site that um, involved uh, basically clear cutting uh, the public right of way. And at the time it wasn't certainly recognized as such but uh, when they started to put back a berm, all right, so I'm gonna share my screen again. If you can see this, uh, this is the first start. So this is coming down from Don Allen up here. Um, that's probably the best way to start. So Don Allen back here, we're heading down Pulpus Road, get the turn off at the low point there. And the prop, you can see the, uh, the utility poles running down the side. And the property shoots off in this direction uh, about here. Um, and you can see, you know, if you just look down the street, you see this pretty healthy canopy. I'm gonna jump way past the site to kind of look back in that direction as well, just to give you a perspective. Um, Let it regen, sorry, maybe a clearer picture. But generally it's a very uh, tree canopied rural roadway. And the, the site that we're talking about is up here. At uh, 38, it originally had a, a driveway entrance over here and a driveway entrance here as shown uh, with this uh, treed frontage. And this is all, turns out all of this is in the right of way. Um, for the most part, I think we're looking, there's some other species in here, but for the most part, we're looking at uh, the pines. Yeah, pitch pine. Pitch pines. And beyond the driveway, I think there's some others. Not sure, maple maybe? Yep. Uh, and some others down the end here. So um, they recently came in to construct um, 
a new dwelling. And as part of that construction effort, they clear cut uh, the whole frontage. It, everything on their property in front of the house, including uh, uh, within the town's right of way. And so they were recently planting, or they had a, a large berm installed um, in front of the utility poles, which was kind of a thing that <clears throat> um, was the indicator that something was going on. And so uh, Ken Bogrand from the town manager's office contacted uh, the attorney for the property and uh, they staked out the property line and uh, noticed that they were in fact looking to replant uh, on the, t it looks like they were planning to install some kind of screening uh, within the town's right of way. And so that alerted us to the fact that there had been this comprehensive clearing of the right of way and that they were trying to replant some level of screening in the right of way. Um, so it's kind of a weird situation because A, they, they did all this clear cutting of <clears throat> technically uh, town trees. And while they're not individually noted out here on Pulpus Road, they certainly are part of the overall landscape. And, uh, and then secondly, look, they were, they were planting um, in the right of way or planning to plant in the right of way, which Ken and I uh, and Stephen, you know, regularly track down uh, encroachments in the right of way. And, and that would have classified as such. So I think this was a, a, a first case that I've seen uh, that we wanted to bring before the commission to sort of get some understanding of how to approach this. Uh, haven't dealt with anything like this that, uh, that I've seen in my tenure. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty ugly to, to say the least, what they've done. Yeah, I, I would say, I know we're not meeting next month. Um, if people haven't seen it or if they maybe have and haven't really noticed the change, it uh, might be worth taking some time to take a quick look uh, to understand the dramatic uh, change that's happened out there and just to maybe uh, couch your thoughts on it. But it, it really has pretty much uh, completely opened to this entire area. Rob and I talked and, and uh, uh, I have spoken to them and I've indicated to them that uh, the town uh, and the appropriate committees will be looking at what needs to be done on their part to reestablish the appropriate um, treatment with respect to the town property, which they have uh, uh, completely destroyed. So uh, they have been told to expect that we will be coming forward with some sort of a plan with respect to replanting or, and fixing this area that's it's gonna be on their dollar and their dime and that they're gonna have to deal with. So. Uh, there's there's an expectation on their part and a recognition on their part that 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 is going to be their responsibility. How deep does the town property go in the right of way there? Just for they, they, it's been staked, uh, and so I don't know the answer to that. But the the edges of the property have been staked uh, by the surveyors because that was the first thing I told them to do was to stake it to show so they could see for themselves that in fact. They were, they were already on town property with some of the proposed berm that they, they had laid out. Yeah, it's, about, uh, it's about 10, it's, it's about 15 to 20 feet off the road, off the edge of the road. You, you can see the stakes, they're there now. Um, is there anybody that the town works with for, I don't know, sort of restoration design or anything like that? Because this probably does need to be, um, you know, drawn up with, sort of like kind and you're not, you're not going to get, you know, 25 foot pitch pine, but certainly get some viburnum and other, I don't know what's it. I can't tell scrub oak. It looks like is in there. Scrub oak, bayberry. It needs to be, it, it really oh, needs to be re-naturalized, re I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, the pitch pine in nursery stock these days, I've got some last fall through surfing hydrangea. 
Nothing yeah. stunning, but you know, five five six footers. Yeah. I mean, so I the, the berm goes almost to the road edge where they have it, where, where it is now. I mean, right. Obviously, that's a non-starter, right? That has to be, the, the town land has to be restored to a natural state, you know, as close to, uh, you know, with, with a plan that, that it uh, eventually blends into the rest of the surroundings, I think. Yeah. So and did and I talk about this? All, correct, Rob? They, they, they. The plant, the plant, the plant material is still on top of the ground. It's not, it's in storage there in the site. Uh, there's a fair amount of, uh, well, the plant material that they were planning, the, the stuff that they were planning to put in is, I believe, still um, low, stored on the site, correct? Okay, good. I, I guess that, 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 that all, all that's all that. You know, it looks like Japanese black pine, Leland cypress. I've seen the whole kind of plant palette that they have sitting in there, and that's certainly not appropriate for the roadside. So, not, not as a naturalized planting. In other words, yeah, yeah. You know, we talked about uh, it, Dave and I met um, last Friday, I believe it was, or I, I lose track of time. It's so busy these days, but we met recently yep. and discussed this. I think part of it would be to, um, ask for a, uh, a landscaping plan uh, based on whatever the committee would deem appropriate. Um, you know, it's really not up for the town to put out uh, time and effort or costs associated with the um, restoration, but put it, we can certainly provide this kind of feedback uh, for them to hire someone to come forward with a planting plan for our consideration. Yeah. Uh, that would be a recommendation. And I think the, the second piece of this was starting back with chapter 132 is, you know, what happens with the cutting down and removing of the town trees? Um, is the committee looking to um, exercise the, the policy uh, for the, the damage that's been done? Uh, there's, you know, there's limited um, there's, I think there's a $300, $300 fine somewhere in here. I mean, it, it, it amounts to a slap in the wrist. It's nothing. Yes. So the, I guess the point would be, it depends on what the committee is interested in doing, because if we looked at the, the tree policy regarding uh, the size and number and uh, species, uh, we'd be, we could add up you know, the number of trees taken, uh, estimate the diameter of what was there and come up with a uh, estimated um, value uh, of the damage. So the town could request uh, that be put on credit in addition to the restoration. But I, I think this is just the early discussions of you know, what it, what it is the committee expects in this kind of situation. I would say, I, you know, we, we actually visit, uh, revisited, uh, or we had a conversation, not identical to this one, but there was some trees that got removed from a property that they, they weren't really of any quality. And I don't know where pitch pines fall into, you know, the, the, the quality standpoint, it would certainly be good to keep the cooperation line open and, and get, you know, with, with the, whoever the homeowner is to get it replanted with, you know, some natural type species along the road. We could certainly request to put some pitch pines back in it. But I, I'm, I guess I'm just wondering about the uh, um, the tree the tree credit policy on pitch pines how that would how that would shape up. Sure. So well, you've already got a you were, Rob you were saying that you are we you already have a precedent on 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 something similar but on a smaller sure. scale. Yeah. Uh, the the tree credit policy actually began with a pitch pine uh, vehicular crash uh, damage incident where the insurance company ultimately paid uh, to replace the pitch pine with two, um, I think it was two elm trees. English oaks. English oaks, thank you, Dale. 
Um, so the point is that they, they are considered, you know, they do have some value. I think um, while I, I understand completely where you're going with that, Mike, that, you know, in general, a pitch pine is a pitch pine. And, you know, we're not talking about a uh, elm tree on Main Street here. But I guess the, the bigger piece is, you know, we're talking about the rural character of the streetscape itself and, and just the blatant um, clear cutting um, to sort of put back something else that, you know, the committee or any town representative had uh, no input or uh, say into is just something that, you know, we don't, we don't want to see repeated. Yeah, so I would say you certainly answered the question on, on the pitch pine that was, I was just was wondering if there was any precedent on, on those trees. So thank you for that. Yep. Yeah, you could easily get a count on that and then, then project the, uh, the value from, 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 from the, the, you know, a ratio and proportion. On, on I mean, these are, these are four inch uh, white edge lines that are painted as uh, scale. For reference, I mean, other than that, I mean, you know, we don't even have stumps to measure. You know, this has been done, and it was done quite some time ago. Right. But yeah. To me, it looks like the largest is probably this. I don't know, eight-inch pitch pine here. Yep. And the rest of them look sort of in the four-inch range. And then there's again the this, probably bigger than that, but uh... is that all one property, or is it subdivided yeah. into two? That's a good question. Ken, do you have an answer for that? Uh, I think it was it was all one property. I think they've, they've done a subdivision with respect to it, with with uh, but the, the ownership is related. So but it's a different it's a different ownership. The the, the answer is that, that I don't have the answer. Yeah. Um, okay. but it used to be Diagostino. That's correct, uh, and, and it was sold, and it's the new people who bought it that that have done this. Yeah, uh, and I was yeah. I was sharing sharing with Rob that uh, um, when the husband made the decision to do this, and the wife told him that he was crazy to do it; he was doing it all wrong, uh, and so she has in fact uh, really chewed his ass out right now. Pardon me, Hannah, uh, uh, <laughs> for doing it, and knowing knowing full well that 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 it's going to cost him a pretty penny in order to be able to fix. Uh, what he did when he when he didn't listen to her in terms of doing the right thing. Uh, so what's the pleasure of the committee? Um, can you guys hear me all right, by the way? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I think that um, just going back to, uh, um, uh, you know, I'm going to make a motion to uh, to have a, a landscape design uh, to be provided to to the town and to us by the owner of the property um, to renaturalize the to renaturalize the uh, the that uh, what, what are we calling it? Not the the town it's buffer right the way. easement right away. the way right yeah right away right yeah. And um, I think concurrently uh, we're going to have to get some sort of valuation on what was out there. And I think that the documentation based on the GIS, um, you know, imagery that you can bring up, that should, that should hold water, right? I mean, we should be able to get a pretty, pretty decent uh, calculation, I would think. I think so. Yeah. So um, who is sort of charged, who would be charged with that? Uh, is that a third that that cost, you know, would be something as a third party consultant that should also be paid for by the homeowner, you know, you know, I, I, Ben, if, if I may, I would uh, just jump in and say, I think requiring the landscape uh, design to renaturalize and to uh, replant, uh, as well as, you know, the, the under the tree credit policy making some determination of uh, the value that was taken um, in, in predominantly pitch pine. Okay, uh, sorry, I didn't, I, mi I missed that part. I was between devices. Okay, so, no um, yeah. so what we could do is uh, if that's the, the idea here, then I could, I could put together a package for, uh, I, I, for Ken. And I think uh, the idea would probably be 
since this is virtual in my tenure, it's been unprecedented. I think it's something we would like to get uh, some input from town council on. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So then we'll plan on coming back um, at our next meeting to um, with with some direction from council. Yeah. I think. Well, but. It, they should be directed to move that that berm to their to their property. But we, uh, we Dave, we, we I have told them that they had to get they had to get whatever was on town property off of town property. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. And Ken, you said it has been staked at this point. Yes, the it, it, it was staked the very next morning after I called him that night. Okay. By the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. So we no we just yeah we'll take that and, motion we'll, this. we'll take that and come back to uh, yeah. uh, the committee and uh, then at the next meeting. Okay. I think. Uh, the only other thing we need to discuss is uh, is uh, the Appleton Road, and we'll we'll. I mean, it's five o'clock now. We've run a marathon here. Um, on the, I Ben said Ben, did you prepare that Appleton Road plan? The yeah. So I I sent I sent it around today to everybody. Yes. Um, I don't know if you all got it or not, but uh, yeah. I'm not at my screen, ben. Yeah, there, there you go. Yeah, I think it was very well. Uh, you put it together quite nicely, and then you know, it really just comes down to the to the tree choices that are on there. The um, I, I'm I'm really not that familiar with Kentucky Coffee Tree, but it's certainly a nice looking looking tree. Yeah, it's yeah there's, of, one, you know, there's one where we planted all the daffodils in the uh, the new street triangle there. Oh, okay. Yep. That's okay. a Kentucky coffee tree there that Roger planted. I thought that was a Nissa with all the leaves off of it. But. No, no, that's the one. That's the one that's in, in the tri right there. It's it's uh, it's more inboard along uh, New Street, going up. Okay. Uh, it's okay. like right across from. Uh, I just have a question. Has this been discussed or shown to the neighbors at all in terms of, of making them aware of the concept behind it and, uh, and getting any input from them? Yeah, uh, we yeah. sent out a letter. Well, Go ahead, Ben. This, yeah, I, sorry, I was just going to say that the plan hasn't been shown, but uh, but like you said, you were just saying, John, the, the letter did go out saying that, uh, you know. Yeah, Ken, we had a letter being suggesting the project. Being proposed. Um, and suggesting, suggesting a few species of trees. We did try to set up a Zoom meeting um, for the neighboring properties to come and kind of um, express what their thoughts were. Um, and it, it was an unsuccessful call. Hasn't, hasn't nobody attended? Yeah, we didn't have any attendance on Zoom. <laughs> uh, however, uh, we, did, we did receive some emails uh, so that some constructive uh, feedback from uh, people that were supportive of the planting efforts. Uh, they reported uh, a number of other uh, things that they would like to see happen out here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like anything else, you know, don't let any good deed go unpunished. Uh, I think the, the, I think the follow-up discussion was that, uh, following the development of this, we'll call it the, the final draft plan, uh, was to reach out and let people know that this was uh, what was expected to go in. Yeah. And, uh, and then from there, once everyone's been noticed and uh, then, we can, then we can start to uh, plan to get these in. You know, I need to understand also sort of what the pre, uh, preferred 
uh, installation timeframes uh, for these are. And while we'd love to uh, say, oh, the plan's been approved, you know, so that means that this thing's going to happen next week. You know, the things that are happening next week have been planned for years and have just gotten approvals, you know, in the past, you know, six months or so. So I would guess if there's a, uh, a, a good planting plan for the fall, a good planting window for the fall, that we spend the time that we have between then and now uh, to, to do continued outreach uh, to make the neighborhood aware that this is the this is the intended plan. Um, if you have any thoughts or objections or otherwise, to let us know, and that the expected planting uh, would would commence, you know, uh, in a a date to be determined. Uh, let's say this fall. But I'm I'm looking for some input from the committee as well on this. How many how many trees in total? Um, if you zoom in, I think you can, if you zoom in on that, uh, it's 15, 15. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Five red maple. Okay. Six All coffee right. tree and four linden. You know, it, 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 it well, it might be good to stake out, stake the tree locations. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing, you know, just you know, and more. and write on the stake what the tree is. Okay. Uh, uh, and and we sent a letter to all the homeowners along there that of uh, that uh, that abut it, and uh, tell them we're th that's what we're up to, and yep. uh, we could do another mailing. Yeah, do another mailing and with the uh, plan, and then we could uh, before then we can go put the stakes out or have it yeah, have that, the stakes happen at the same time. That would yeah. that would give them some some idea of the you know where it's going to be and you know. Yeah. But I think I think you get a, we get a lot more feedback that way. Sure. Yeah. Agreed. Could I ask yeah, I'd say to be determined plant planting. It, you know, the earliest would be next fall. It might be you know coming out of the dormant season and. March, but really, who would this would go out, Rob? Would this go out to bid, or is this, this a town? Would, this would go out to bid. Could I could I ask one question about the Silver Linden? Um, how did we choose that? I just noticed Silver Linden struggled as a street tree more than a backyard tree. I just uh, I always found that the tomatosa um, species was, you know, a little bit more on the urban tough side than maybe the cordata and some of the other lindens that you see at like a ornamental nursery. Um, that just came from my experience with um, supplying plants to urban conditions and kind of plants that need to be tough to survive. The, but we uh, could I think that I think the Silver Lindens do very well in a windy spot too. Um, you know they have that 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 pubescence on the leaves that uh, uh, that that seems to. Uh, yeah, I like a nice tree. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, you know. Yep. To Dale to nice Dale's tree. point, I've had uh, some issues through the years with like um, Redmond Linden or Green Spire, but. Um, the silver would kind of be the one linden yep. that I, I've always found to be pretty urban tough. Yep, I agree. Okay. Um, if the committee is supportive um, of the plan, uh, we could certainly uh, do the stakeout, do the mailing, and then uh, plan on doing a planting in the fall, getting a bit out this summer. Uh, so, Mike, you mentioned uh, fall planting. When would you expect? What's the what's the earliest date that you would um, expect that would be? Um, I mean, earliest mid October. That would probably be the very earliest, more like yeah. November. 
when I when I ran that big the tree program for the Nantucket Historic Trust, we we generally didn't get any deliveries until like first part of November. Okay. And planted right to you know almost Christmas time. You can plant so, here November, almost November, December. December. Really. I did put it in um I did put it in Ernie Strang's ear about this planting and um, the need for possibly some smaller boulders, which he said he would be happy to supply. Just let him know when. Yeah, I heard he had a good supply now, John. Yeah, well, that, I, that's exactly what I said. I, I told him you owe me some boulders, Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> they all got to go back. That's right. <laughs> Well, thank you all uh, for your involvement in this. This is, uh, it's been a really good project so far and I'm uh, looking forward to uh, getting some trees in the ground out here as well as around town. Um, and we can work up a, uh, another mailing, uh, Hannah, and we'll go out and stake this out uh, with Dale so he's aware of what's going on as well. And yeah. we'll go from there. That sounds good. I'll give you, um, I mean, it, that plan is scaled, but if you need some measurements, uh, John and I took the measurements. I'll pass those on to you. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Hannah? Yeah. I, I was just saying, um, is, is that everything that we have? I, I, I think for this meeting, I think that's, I think we're, I, I think we're good. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's. Yeah, motion to adjourn. Yep. So I'll second that. <laughs> okay, all in favor. All right. See you, in, see you, see you all in, uh, in, in June. Yes. Yeah. But, all right, thanks everybody. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you.